Hi, it's Dougie from Valto. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at some examples of some Power Apps. Now, these Power Apps are going to be Canvas Power Apps, which are easily accessible on mobile devices, such as phones and tablets. All the examples I'm going to be showing you today are just to give you uh, a bit of an idea about what is uh, achievable within Power Apps, and it should be a bit of a thought-provoking video. It will give you some ideas about what you can achieve with Power Apps yourself. Um, and if you need any help, you can reach out to us for any additional support. All the examples I'm going to be showing you in this video are all proof of concepts, which have either been based on uh, ideas that we've been building for um, clients. And we're not going to be showing you anything which has got any sensitive data in it or real world data. So these are all just proof of concepts, first drafts of applications, just to give you a bit of an idea about what we can do with Power Apps. So the first app that I'm looking at here is our employee directory. So the employee directory is actually pulling all of its details from the Office 365 Azure AD uh, user profile. So all the employees inside of um, your Office 365 tenant. So this enables you to be able to search easily for people and what it, what it does over and above, there are products like things like Delve inside of Office 365, which will allow you to search for people. But what it won't allow you to do is search for people that you don't know necessarily what their name is. So if I was looking for somebody, say, um, uh, and I, just, I knew what department they were from, I might want to search to say, okay, well, I'm looking for somebody in the development department, um, and that's then filtered down uh, these particular people. I can then look for someone with a particular job title. So I can say, for example, I'm looking for a cloud specialist, and then that's then filtered down to find then uh, my particular sort of profile. Um, but this could be pulling all sorts of different properties from um, Azure AD, um, including things like the department, job title, the country, office locations, and all the other different properties that uh, are contained within the profiles. You could add some additional things onto here. So we've got things like our name, job title, picture being pulled through, um, phone numbers, and email address. You could add some additional things like clicking a button to send that person um, a sort of email straight from here, or any other kind, kind of automation. The next uh, next app that we've built is our leave request system. Um, so the leave request system is something that we actually use internally um, to sort of monitor and track and approve our leave requests. So the page that I'm looking at here is kind of like the home page of the app where I can see all my previous kind of requests and I can filter down by ones which um, I say pending or that have been previously approved or I could look at them by category as well. So we don't just track our own holidays, but we also track things like working from home, sickness, authorized leave uh, and so on. Once you select one of the requests, um, it would then show on the right hand side um, the details of the particular request and I can choose to cancel the request. So if say, for example, it was a holiday request and I wanted to cancel it and then it would give me my entitlement back. Now I can create a new request by clicking across the top uh, here and I can then choose which type of um, leave request it is. So say, for example, if I select on a holiday, it will then show me my current balance for my holiday as well as based on how much time I take off, um, how many days that will then reduce from my balance. So say, for example, I choose that I'm going to take, um, let's say, I'm going to take next week off. It knows then that's a total of five days. My current balance is 7.5. So my new balance, if this was approved, would then go down to 2.5. There are other types of leave as well. So I could uh, say booking sort of uh, six. So maybe if I'd had uh, a day off sick last week and I wanted to submit that as a, a trackable um way of keeping on top of that, uh, as well as things like authorized absence and working from home. Now, of course, they don't have an entitlement, so that's not going to deduct anything from my entitlement. And we also have the ability to have uh, time off in lieu. That's what TOIL stands for. And again, that um, has its own balance uh, away from um, the holiday entitlement balance. Just so if you wanted to kind of build up a kind of time off in lieu, maybe you've been working weekends or out of hours, and you can add uh, time back onto that and get your manager's approval, and that builds up an additional entitlement on top of your holiday. In this case, I would just book a holiday. And then I've got holiday length, so I can book this in uh, full days, I can book this in half days as well as this ability, not everyone would see this box, but there's an ability to book on behalf of um, somebody else as well. So maybe this box would appear for kind of like an office manager if they needed to be able to submit, um, say, sickness when someone was off on, on their behalf, or maybe it was a sort of personal assistant that's submitting on, on behalf of director um, or so on. 
We then add our details across the bottom. Now, I would always advise in these kind of systems that you do provide some kind of detail. I find it really useful at the end of the year to be able to go back and see how I've spent my holiday entitlement and say, oh yeah, okay, well, I took two days off to go shopping here or X, Y, Z, and then it makes sense in your own head about your calculating how you've used that entitlement. So once you've um, put in, in, uh, in here, so week off holiday, France, something like that. We can submit our request and that will then submit it to our uh, line manager or whoever's marked as our approver uh, to approve that particular request. Uh, and then that will then deduct from my holiday entitlement. On the left hand side, we've also got some additional tabs. So I can go through to my leave balance page where I can see my current um, sort of holiday entitlement. I can see who my leave approver is uh, and their sort of profile picture. I can see what my holiday entitlement is for next year as well. So not only am I booking in the current year, but I could book for next year as well. And I can see all the different types of leaves that I've taken, including sickness or vice absence when I've worked from home and so on. We can also track uh, company holidays as well. So a lot of organizations will have, um, for example, like a Christmas shutdown or something like that. And you want to make sure that people are sort of adhering to that, as well as being able to quickly see all the different bank holidays that are, are sort of taken into consideration as part of the system. I can see my employees, so I can see people who report directly to me. So this is really useful for, say, large organizations when people are moving between departments. And you want to make sure you know that, that a new member of your team um, is, is part of the system and you're then approving their requests. And I can see the employee requests in here. So I can see all the different requests that my team have submitted. And we've also got an about page, which is basically telling us the different types of leave and maybe what our policy is about sick leave or things like that. And we can link to particular policy documents if we wanted to as well. The next app is something that this is a proof of concept that we built for uh, the City of London Council and they were looking for a really simple kind of tablet application that their um, sort of maintenance department who are going out on site and fixing things and gardeners that were going out and um, sort of completing tasks wanted to be able to um, log when they were sort of finding issues and, and log when they were actually completing uh, tasks on a certain time frame. So for example, um, I might be going out uh, and I'm sort of um, doing some maintenance. So uh, I get my app out, click on the maintenance button and I'm say I'm going to St. James Park. And then here are some example tasks that I would need to complete whilst I was at the park. And I can mark these off as complete as I kind of move through. And if I spot an issue with a particular um, job i can click on issues and maybe that then flags then um to the sort of back office there's a particular issue maybe there's a broken fence panel or something like that uh and in the the more production version of this app we then had the ability to take a photo of that um, and all the details of that and that would then generate a follow-up task um for the maintenance team for the following day once they get on site to look at that uh, and fix that particular issue but all of that data all of that information is then um, stored in sharepoint in the background so it's all easily auditable and exportable into Excel for analysis afterwards and also there is automated tasks which go to the back office um, as part of that issue tracking. There are other types of apps as well things like we, we built donation forms so this was a, an app that for, for example uh, a charity when they're at an event and they're taking donations they want to easily be able to track who they got their donation from um, as well as sort of um, what type of donation it was and capturing kind of signatures and, and things like that. This is a very basic looking app, but it's actually really um, quite a, a useful feature that there is cameras that are built into the apps. Um, so you can do things like not only taking photos of things and recording that as a photo, but scanning things like barcodes, QR codes uh, and so on, um, which can then do things like maybe checking in or checking out equipment from a factory um, or maybe sort of um, proving that a task has been done so um, rather than say for example like a cleaner um, so that's looking after the sort of the toilets of a, a, a hotel or something like that rather than having to go in and write down into a paper log that they've completed that they can simply scan a code on the back of the toilet's door to say that this particular thing has been cleaned and that will automatically digitally log the date and time that that task was completed um, it's also been used for things like security guards who need to prove that they've been to on site and walk around the premise and there's QR codes on the walls that they scan um, and then that would then log exactly the date and time that that was scanned and the geolocation of where that was scanned as well to prove that that check was done at that point in time. 
there were some applications that we worked alongside Sony Music that they wanted to create something uh, where they could track kind of um, album releases and printing um, and ordering more kind of CD albums. Uh, they wanted to create something which looked like sort of like a, a retro kind of um, Walkman. Um, so we built a, a kind of interface which kind of um, looked like that and they could go through and select an artist and they can click to create new different things and edit things directly through this app. There are typical kind of business functions that every organization has. So things like reporting expenses and claiming back ex expenses is a very typical thing. So a very popular app that we uh, deploy for our clients is the expenses uh, power app. So this is where you can come in and you can see um, all your expenses that you've, you've submitted. Um, you can create a new kind of expense report and say between a, a particular time frame. Um, of, of that particular report and then once you've created your report you can then assign um, certain receipts and things like that so again you can take a photo of that particular receipt uh, and then log against that the, the amount that's been spent the type of category it is say food beverage transportation and so on um, and then that can then be submitted um, to um, so your line manager for approval and then that then forwards it on to say the finance department um, that can then reimburse you for uh, that particular receipt. Again, a typical kind of business function, uh, reporting accidents. So a lot of offices, workplaces will have a accident logbook, which is a physical paper book uh, that sits somewhere in the office. Uh, whereas what this uh, Power App will then do is digitally transform that into an app that every employee can have on their phone, on their tablets, on their computers. So if there is an accident, they can easily log exactly what happened, when it happened, any type of injury, um, and then that can automate a notification um, to sort of follow up on that as well. All of that data is then also stored in, um, for say for example, SharePoint as a database that you can then do analysis on that afterwards to kind of find out how often these accidents are happening and then use a little bit of um, sort of thought to think about how you can mitigate those accidents in the future. We've also got a timesheet entry uh, app. So again, a lot of organizations will need to track their um, time spent on projects and things like that. Um, and with our app that we use internally, this is linked to Microsoft Planner as well. So all of our projects are planned out inside of Planner. And then we have a drop down list in here, which allows us to select from that particular one. We can select the week um, from here and we can add multiple rows in here and select the type of task that it relates to, as well as adding kind of time into here all of that is then stored it goes off for the line manager approval at the end of the week uh, and then that's then stored um, as an exportable report um, for the finance team and the final app is an inspection app. Now, this is just showing it in um, a way maybe that it was being used for inspecting a truck or a lorry, um, but it could be for any type of maintenance of equipment, um, factory kind of um, uh, machinery or site inspections. But in this case, it's, uh, say, looking at inspecting a lorry, and then we're looking at, for example, the brakes, and then we've got certain checks that we need to do uh, and look at this, this particular lorry and say, yeah, okay, well, um, this uh, the service the brakes is fine but there's a, an issue with the parking brake um, and then I can log a particular issue against that and that would then go off into the background maybe report that to the engineering team that they raise their task and they need to check that particular lorry and prevent it from going back out onto the road everything I've shown you today um, are just some general ideas hopefully you've got some some ideas about how power apps can be used really is limitless uh, the amount of options you've got and the different type of applications you could create um, all of everything in power apps is kind of low code which means that it's nice and simple to build a lot of these applications with sort of traditional software development would have taken months uh, if not years to develop whereas now these apps can be developed in days if not weeks um, to try and get that as efficient as possible if you'd like to see any more examples um, of Power Apps or if you've got any ideas you'd like to discuss, uh, please do not hesitate to contact me. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you need help, we do offer professional services, including bespoke development, pre-built solutions, training packages, and a pay-as-you-go support service which bridges those knowledge gaps within your existing team. All of our employees are based in the UK and have years of experience deploying solutions with small businesses as well as large enterprise organizations. We offer a free consultation with a no obligation quotation. If this all sounds good, drop us an email 
ask for Dougie, and I look forward to hearing from you soon.